Today we're going to be doing some math with uh, concrete. Uh, we'll be focusing on reinforced concrete today. And if you don't know what reinforced concrete is, it's a combination of concrete and steel to uh, make concrete structures, bridges, decks, uh, vertical construction. Basically, steel brings to concrete where concrete is weak. I, I guess there's a better way of saying that. Steel is the composite part of reinforced concrete that gives the reinforced concrete is tensile strength. So we've got a problem over here where we have a single reinforced concrete beam and what this bad boy here is supposed to represent is our rectangular reinforced concrete beam. We have a single layer of reinforcement. Oh, we actually have, you're right, four number nine bars. So this is our concrete reinforced or rectangular reinforced beam, uh, 12 inch base, uh, total height of 20 inches and from the middle of the um, what's called reinforcement layer to the extreme concrete fiber we got 17.5 inches. Our job, oh we've got an ultimate strength of 4,000 psi and a yield strength of our steel of 60,000 ksi. Our job is to find the nominal moment strength, the capacity uh, as well as the strength reduction factor. It's gonna be awesome! So uh, let's dive into it. Second board! So when doing um, analysis for single reinforced concrete beams, there's an actual method to this that you have to go through. And one of the most important pieces of this method is recognizing the minimum amount of steel. Now ACI 318 gives you this whole shtick about how much steel you should have and that relates to controlling the failure zone of um, the, the reinforced concrete structure and that's a lesson for all you junior engineers out there when we design concrete we design it with the expectation that it will fail under certain loads and it's going to break down in doing so we want to make sure that if it does fail we control the failure to give the user whoever's on it running room so room to recognize the, the surface or the structure is failing and they can get off of it. So the first thing that we do, number one, I gotta stop tapping. So the first thing that we're going to do is check that there's this minimum amount of steel in our reinforced concrete beam. So we've got this three times our square root F prime C over our yield strength times the base or uh, width of our uh, reinforced concrete beam and then that depth from the extreme fiber to the uh, center of our steel reinforcing area. We've got to compare that to this 200 PSI over the same uh, yield strength times that ge geometry of our reinforced concrete beam and it's got to be above this certain minimum and if it's not well then we're up Schitt's Creek without a paddle we have to either resize the beam or start putting more steel in there. So our equations tell us that our maximum minimum amount of steel that we need is around 0.7 inches squared and I thought we had somewhere around, but we have around 4 inches squared uh, uh, for our area of steel so we are we're good to go. We got more than enough according to our AS min or our, our ACI 318. Now the second piece of that and I'm doing exactly what the problem asks to conserve on time is identifying our strength reduction factor. Now that, when we're looking at uh, a concrete beam, there are many things that go into it that can cause a reduction in strength, whether it's the concrete that gets placed, the contractor that places it, the steel that goes into it. Who knows? But what we do is to take into account those I don't know scenarios, we put a strength reduction factor and that's based on the geometry of the beam, the amount of steel that's in there and the type of zone that it's in when it fails. Now based on you're good. Okay, based on the strain of the steel that we use through again, you know, looking at the geometry of the the um, the beam and the the strength of the concrete we identify that the concrete is either in a compression zone, a transition zone, or a tension zone. And we want the concrete to be in the tension zone. What that means is when the concrete fails, 
it's failing, it's yielding in the tension zone, meaning that we actually can see the cracks on the bottom of the beam as they fail under tensile load. If the concrete fails in compression, that means it's going to fail on the top of the beam, and it's going to be the compression side of that beam, or really it's the concrete that's failing, it's a catastrophic failure, the end users are not going to have that running room to get to safety and bad things can happen. Now, we can have a transition zone, as it turns out, where we're at, looking at the geometry, the amount of steel, and well, as well as the strength of the concrete, we are in this transition zone where we have to not use a, a solid number, but uh, derive the strength reduction factor. And we do that by using that yield strain in this awesome looking equation. Now in doing so, we find out that our strength reduction factor is 0.87. Now, What's crazy about that is that it's not that much of a strength reduction factor compared to what the original strength reduction factor, which we use if we're in a tension zone, which is 0.9. And if you look at that failure strain, where is it? It's 0.00459. I mean, that is right on the edge of that tension zone, which is 0.005. So we don't have that much of a strength reduction factor. now. Using that strength reduction factor, we multiply it by the uh, capacity of the beam to get a design capacity. So a reduction in the moment capacity of that beam. So we take that 0.87 times the 291 kip feet to give us what we can use as 250 kip feet. Now here's the thing. We haven't talked about that yet. So we're going to go back. We're going to show you how we found 291, but this is actually our final answer here. Funny enough, they didn't ask this in the question. They asked for this and this, but they didn't ask for the combination, but we like you guys, so. So this is the third and final board where we're going back in time a little bit to calculate that moment capacity. Um, and there's a lot of things involved here, and funny enough, it's actually balancing the um, the actual geometric design, the concrete strength, and the area of steel. Now, what we're doing here is, and we're doing a very abridged version of this, is, is calculating that, that balance, right? So we know we have a, a tension reinforcement nine bars, or nine number four bars, or four number nine bars, sorry. Um, so we have an area of steel of four inches squared. We have a single layer so our failure strain or your yield strain that you're going to have to find to find the tension zone that I talked about is going to be uh, ES equal or I'm sorry epsilon S equals epsilon T. For that being said, we have a tension steel or yield steel which is F of S equals F of Y. We said that was 60,000 KSI or 60,000 pounds per square inch is that yield stress or that yield strength. Um, and what we're going to use in Manoshevitz I would love to spend an hour talking about this because we can really go into what the beam looks like, how we're balancing the energy that comes from the steel with the energy that's coming from the concrete. And there's this Whitney stress block that we use, and I love the name of that because my wonderful, beautiful wife and my boss's name is Whitney. Um, so anyway, we use this Whitney stress block to calculate the depth of the amount of area that, uh, uh, that our concrete is bringing to that balance, if you will. And that is equal to, this of our Whitney stress block is equal to the area of steel times the yield strain or strength of that steel divided by 85% uh, times our yield or our, our concrete compressive strength, sorry, times our base. So in doing so, we got four inches squared times 60,000 KSI divided by 0.85 times 4 KSI or 4,000 PSI or strength of our concrete times the base. So as you can see, we're balancing our steel versus our concrete portion. So this is in the bottom portion of our beam. This is the, con this is the top portion of our concrete to get th this depth of our Whitney stress block. And with that, or excuse me, uh, with that, yeah, what we do is we multiply the depth of our Whitney stress block, we divide it by this beta 1. Now what beta 1 is, 
it's one of those reduction factors, but this time it's based on the strength of the concrete. And with 4,000 PSI concrete or 4 KSI concrete, our strength reduction factor is 0.85. Or this beta 1 is 0.85. If it was a 6,000 PSI concrete, then we would have to bring that down. If it's a weaker concrete, I believe it stays at about 0.85. But again, that's in... You know, there's a lot of different textbooks. My favorite textbook on this is the Nawi text. Just awesome. We'll link it down below, but that's not a paid advertisement. All right, so what we've done here is this calculation gives us the depth to the neutral axis. And why that's important is that we use the depth of the neutral axis plus that dimension that we saw before, that D equals like 17.5 inches, that depth of the extreme fiber of your concrete to the middle of your reinforcing steel, to do this similar triangles calculation and find out this, this failure strain right there. And here's that similar triangles that we're going over, that's the D to 17.5, that sees the depth to our neutral axis, this epsilon CU is that failure of the concrete or the failure strain of the concrete which we assume to be 0 0.003 inches and again if we had more time we can actually draw it out it's pretty freaking cool um, that whole similar triangle thing. what we determine is that our failure strain is 0 0.00459 now here's the thing when we look at our different zones that's right on the edge of our tension zone remember the tension zone makes us happy so this brings us into our transition zone, but uh, it's barely into our transition zone. So when we look at the strength reduction factor, we're going from a 0.9 down to a 0.87, which really isn't that much of a jump. But anyway, to, to calculate that moment, we're really doing, just using the basic formula, moment equals force times distance. And I really need to know, learn what to do with my hands because I constantly do this thing and it's so freaking annoying. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> so, um, what we're doing here is we're actually focusing on the steel, right? So this is the area of the steel and this is the yield strength of that steel. And we're multiplying that by a moment arm, a distance from this center point that the our, 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 our force is going to act, excuse me, the distance from the, that the force is going to act from some certain point. So that's D, that extreme fiber to our uh, middle of our area of steel, then it's the depth of our Whitney block divided by 2 is our moment arm. We multiply that by the energy, the, the strength that we're getting out of our steel, and that, you know, <laughs> that gives us this moment capacity, that 291 feet. But here's the thing, when we're designing, we don't use this. We have to multiply this by a strength reduction factor, which we did in the last slide. So I think the final answer is actually 291 times 0.87, which makes it 253 kit feet.